you know, is it shocking? It's certainly surprising. And uh, look, the Cardinals, they were a 500 team for most of the year. They have the amazing 17-game winning streak. They were supposed to be the, uh, you know, the division winner, according to the Vegas odds, entering the season. They were the favorite. They lose in the, the wild card game. I, I didn't like the idea of going to Alex Reyes in that spot. You wonder, though. I mean, we're just now reacting to this news. Um, we, we heard talk of Mike Schilt potentially getting a contract extension. That was being reported right. in the media just in the last week or so. It uh, apparently this pr- Zoom is going on as we speak, and the first thing I've seen come out of it is John Mozeliak has called it philosophical differences between he and the Cardinal manager, and that's why he made the decision, which I think is real interesting. I'm sure we're going to find out more here in the next uh, hour or so, but that one shocked me could because to your point, I was like this was all set to talk about extension. All the, the entire coaching staff was coming back. Everybody was happy. It seemed like, you know, we we had a great finish to the season, and bang, it blows up. Now you throw out the card. All right, who's next? What the heck are they going to do? What's What change occurred between the two parties that all of a sudden went, you know, everything went awry? And, and to your point, that, that may, is it that kind of move? I don't know. I mean, I kind of just went, okay, well, we'll see what happens with that move and moving forward. But uh, obviously the two sides were not seeing eye to eye. And if that's the case, it's time for the one guy to move on. And I'm thinking back, I can't remember who reported this, so I apologize. I'm sure it was somebody from the Post-Dispatch. But remember when when Mike Matheny uh, threw Michael Walk out there against Travis Ishikawa, and there was a report that John Mosellock didn't ride the bus home? With the team, remember oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 clearly that was one of those moves that to me was so stark and so many people disagreed with that. Now I'm not necessarily trying to compare the Alex Reyes move to that, but I think it was in that realm. This is my opinion. And everybody mm-hmm. I've 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 talked to, I've heard, they just did not like that move whatsoever. That that was not a guy you could you could trust in that situation. Now, do I think this is because of that? Not necessarily, but I did think that was a pretty alarming move in the biggest game of the season. And so you just wonder when you hear philosophical differences, is that about managing a bullpen? I mean, is that about uh, your hitting philosophy? Also remember that Jeff Albert was on the the hot seat earlier yeah. this year, and the offense did respond. Um, again, it's just weird because when I saw that news, I, I couldn't believe it. Now, <laughs> and I looked at each other, I was like, what the heck? And look, I think... Mike Schilt being on the hot seat, I think that was a fair debate to have because this this was a team where you expected more from them. And I again, I don't want to keep harping on it, but I, I thought the, the Alex Reyes move, I thought that was a terrible in-game decision. I didn't think he would lose his job over it. So it makes you wonder. And again, this this Zoom is going on right now. It started at 145. So John Mozalock is speaking. And we're on the radio here. And again, I apologize because we were right in the middle of basically uh, an Andrew Coffin Mizzou segment. And uh, I get the phone shown to me that uh, Jeff Passan is reporting that Mike Schilt is out. I, I will say this. This is how out of the blue it came. Just about everyone who covers the team, which we know, Derek and Jeff Jones and all those guys, they were tweeting out a statement that said, apparently Mike Schilt is out. Zoom call was supposed to start four minutes ago. We'll have more. <laughs> It's like they scheduled a press conference minutes ago, and we're going to have more right now. I mean, it's just amazing that this thing just blew up like this. Very, uh, very strange, especially for an organization, Charlie, that, look, they they know which direction they want to go. They pretty much set out, this is how we do our business. This isn't how they do their business this way. You know, they're, hey, okay, we're moving on. We're going to do this. Not bang, out of the blue after... Apply or implying that hey everything's good looks like everybody's back now we can start talking about count nope far from the truth. To be fair though, now I agree with you big picture, mm-hmm. but didn't it also surprise you when Mike Matheny was fired during the season right before the All Star break? It was, and I say that because mm-hmm. I don't mean to interrupt, but okay. I say that because I thought that would be the type of move that would happen in the winter, because again at that time the discussion of Mike Matheny being fired was legit. I didn't think the Cardinals would pull the trigger midseason. Nobody even really talked about that. So I do think if you go back to the last time they changed managers, this is 
it's similar in the way that nobody saw this coming. The Cardinals proactively made a move. You can say philosophical differences, but that also means that the Cardinals brass basically did not want Mike Schilt here. And so that was a move being made within the same week of discussions and reports of Mike Schilt talking about contract extensions. So it is pretty dang surprising. I, I'm still trying to wrangle it all together. You know, you brought up Matheny's thing, and it was very uncharacteristic for the Cardinals to fire a manager within a season, agreed. But I think at that point, what was going on with the ball club in that, that weekend against Cincinnati, I remember it, they lost. They were just, there was, it was dead at the ballpark. There was no life in the ball club. And I thought, yeah, after that loss Saturday, I go, it's probably time. Uh, based on what we were seeing on the, on the field. So uh, the Schilt is out, and apparently, according to more of the tweets I see coming out of here, uh, John Mozalek is not prepared to comment any further other than philosophical differences. He's not going to get into what the reasons were. So uh, there'll be more digging. We'll see. So when when this just happens and you're trying to process it in real time, Am I off base, do you think? Do you think, I mean, because the wild card game, it's one game, but it's the most important game of the season. It's the game that determines you obviously advancing and potentially running deep in the playoffs. And I do think if the Cardinals won that game, they had a pretty dang good shot of of going far in the playoffs. And you can go back to, there was a lot of criticism of, of Adam Wainwright hitting and then coming back out and only recording one out. And and the Alex Reyes move, it, it's one of those weird things because I I in real time I just loathe that move. It's it's nothing against Alex Reyes. We know he was an all-star and he was deserving and 24 straight saves, but they took him out of high leverage spots late in the season. He lost his closer's role for a reason. And all due respect to me, he was he was break glass if needed in the wild card game. There was three or four other guys that I felt more comfortable with, even if they're a starter, even if they're Dakota yeah. Hudson or Jack Flaherty. Yeah. Jack Flaherty has top end talent. He is your most talented arm. I know he wasn't healthy a hundred percent, but he had thrown a couple times. And I just want—I mean, do you do you think it's it's because of that? Am I am I uh, overblowing you know, yeah, that? I don't know that for a fact, but as you're describing it. I'm I'm picturing and hearing it in my head, and I'm hearing the response. I understand the question, but we have numbers, and we feel that that's our guy. And we're ready to get. And you know what? I also hear this after that statement. Well, Mike, that was a wrong decision, and we can't have that anymore. So we're going to be prepared to move on. And I'm reading some uh, some tweets coming out from the press conference. Our own Frank Cusimano says most says he felt the team was managed well. He says this decision was not based on wins and losses. This is not a reflection on simply wins and losses. It's more at a higher level where we saw the team going and where we wanted to go. That's from Kevin Wheeler from Camo X. We're just reading these tweets as they're coming out here. Man. <laughs> it, it's This is shocking, uh, to say the least. This is unlike this organization to make something that bold and drastic uh, so quickly. But th- obviously they have made their decision. They weren't afraid to go, okay, that's it. Let's all move on. And now the uh, search will be for and, the next guy. And I have to say, when I say I like this move, I'm not saying that in any way to disparage Mike Schilt. And I understand it's probably hard to hear that and, and not think that's the case because I like Mike Schilt. I think he's a really good dude, and I think he's a good manager. But I think this is more about the expectations of the St. Louis Cardinals which isn't it fair to say fans and media the last three or four years under Schilt, but but it's it's been more so the fall off since 2015 when they had the amazing run from 2011 to 2015, where that's where you want the Cardinals to get back to, which is a top five team in baseball for that stretch. It was a top one, two, or three team in National League for a five-year span, and they have not been there. It's also fair to point out. Have they bad? No. Has Schilt been a fine manager? Sure. But I, I think this also speaks to the DeWitts and John Mosellock wanting to return the St. Louis Cardinals to excellence. For, for years, I've always heard Bill DeWitt say, we're shooting for 90 wins. 
And I've always thought, that's great, but guess what? That doesn't even win your division in a lot of years. You should be shooting for 95-plus wins. Usually win the World Series, right? Those are the teams that usually run deep. Yeah. I. There's just so much that I, I just got through my head, and I'm still trying to get I'm going through some tweets, too. Uh, Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports, big Cardinal fan, says Schilt was very shocked, according to... I bet. <laughs> ...that he'd been fired. I, I get I get that. Uh, so there's just so many. There's a lot of questions now that need to be answered. I mean, we're getting on the text line. Well, this, does that mean Yachty could be a player manager? I mean, it could be. I don't know. I, I would think not. Um, but who is that guy? We I hear the name Skip Schumacher thrown out there. Go ahead. You got a smirk on your well, face. Well, I only ahead. smirk for this reason. Yeah. By the way, Skip Schumacher is a fantastic idea. I'm surprised he's not he's not mentioned for candidates for San Diego when he's been there. Well, but, I'm guessing he's going to be let go because I'm guessing they're cleaning house. Probably. Maybe. Connecting dots. And can we go a little longer here? Yeah, I know yeah, yeah, this we, is obviously enormous news. I'm smirking for one reason. It's an obvious smirk. And I listened to a sound yesterday and the day before, and it was Tony Russa when he was asked if he's going to be coming back. And he said, first you got to talk with the front office, then you got to talk with the players. They want you back. And then they... Uh, they check you check yourself to see if you want to come back. Now again, that just came to my mind. But it's just funny to think about. When you have Yachty's last ride, probably Wayno's last ride, who knows? You probably don't want to go back to that well. It's it's fun to talk about. But man, you're just thinking about managerial candidates. The Cardinals, they usually like to stay in house. I mean, look, Mike Schilt was in house. Even Mike Matheny, although at the time he was out of baseball, he was a Cardinals guy through and through. Yeah. I mean, is it going to be stubby clap? It doesn't seem like that type of move, although that's a possibility. This is this will be an interesting hire from the standpoint. I mean, what you're bringing up, do they want to go in-house and keep it in-house? Because that's what they did with Mike Schilt, and they did it with Matheny. Are they going to go outside the box? I don't know who the guy would be, but I'm just saying, will they? And the name Skip Schumacher, which was brought up, that's kind of that's kind of halfway, right? Yeah, he was an in-house guy, but he's going elsewhere. He's kind of biding this time. Maybe he is, and everybody praises that guy as getting the opportunity at some point. Um, Oliver Marmol was really liked by a lot of people and thought he should be given mm-hmm. a chance. I don't know if he'll be given a, a shot at this thing. We'll we'll find out. I mean, there's just so much going on right now through your brain. You're going, why? And the Cardinals won't say why for sure. And that's a good point, though. You talk about some organizations cleaning house. Remember, Mike Schilt was on the staff when Mike Matheny got fired. And they were able to promote him from the field staff to be the manager for the last four years or so. So you wonder how high they are on an Ali Marmol, on a stubby clap. In terms of, we know they're high on them as as coaches in the big leagues, but to be the next manager. I I thought there was going to be some coaching staff change anyway, whether it was... Mike Maddox, Jeff Albert, you wondered, did Jeff Albert do enough to keep his job in the second half? And now you might have an entirely new staff. You definitely have a new manager. Yeah, you you got it. Well, and and that's part of the process, right? Especially if it's an outside person, because he's got to have some say in who he brings in. He'll want to bring in some of his guys, so to speak. Maybe some of his guys are are part of what's already here. I don't know that. Uh, That is just... So much for a team that won 90 games uh, and did get in the playoffs. Yeah, that they, they, they took the team that won 100 and what did they won 105 in the regular season to within one at bat of eliminating them from the playoffs. And oh, by the way, we didn't even mention this um, change at the starting pitching spot for tonight's game for the Dodgers. They are going to start Corey Knable instead of uh, Urias. In this game, I think a little gamesmanship to uh, switch up pitchers on them because we know that Giants want to use lefty righty matchups in their lineup. So, uh, don't want to not throw that out there as part of the craziness here in the last 15, 20 minutes. And you probably have Knable as an opener going one, maybe two innings, then come back with the lefty Urias to be your bulk guy and potentially throw yeah. four to five innings. Yeah, I'm going through Twitter here. And as you mentioned, Mike Schilt was very shocked when he heard this news. As we all are uh, pretty pretty darn surprised. Like I said, I'm right in the middle of that interview with Andrew Kaufman talking to Mizzou, and you showed me your phone, and I'm like, what? 
I uh, I still in in all I I'm liking the text line now. It's blowing up with suggestions. I see Jose Okendo mentioned a couple hundred times. Uh, I see uh, Eric in the Central West End says I want the cards to hire Buck Showalter. Uh, again, that would be interesting because it'd be somebody with outside of the organization. I don't know that he fits the Cardinals IO. I think he might be the guy San Diego will be looking at, but we'll see. You know, we don't know which way they're going right now. And that's that's a good point because if you also think back to potentially learning from past mistakes. So Mike Matheny, although his record was really good here and he took them to the playoffs, you also handed the keys to a Corvette which was the 2012 Cardinals, a team coming off the World Series championship, a team ready to win immediately. You handed the keys to a first-year big league manager. And looking back, even though that team 12, NLCS 13, World Series 14, NLCS, you could make the case that with a veteran manager, could that team have won a World Series in those next three years? Could they have gotten to another World Series? Again, with a proven manager. I think that's a fair question. And I bring that up because don't you think the 2022 Cardinals, Yachty's last ride, Wayno's last ride, I mean, you have Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. They're not young. This team is ready to win next year. If there's ever a team that you want a proven manager to not go through your, your kind of first-year manager screw-ups, I would think it's 2022 because the Cardinals – Look, we're all critical. I think the Cardinals could be really, really good next year. I think they could be really, really good, and they have money to spend also. That that may be, again, a possibility in what, what the organization is thinking. To your point, they they clicked at the end of the season, and we saw a team with exceptional defense, not just good defense, exceptional defense, a group that you pointed out. You've got your cornerstones on the corner, on the infield. You have your outfield coming around and being very productive and and, uh, very good defensively. So if you're the Cardinals and you're not happy with the guy you have and you're not all on the same page and you're also, look, you're going to have to add a big bat to this lineup. Well, if you're going to do all those things, the right guy, the right fit, you make the change and you go get whoever that guy is with the same philosophy that you have. Um, just, just it's it's pretty crazy right now to see where this goes. So Jeff Jones tweeting out that uh, Ben Fredrickson asked John Mozeliak if tension between Schilt and Jeff Albert was the cause of the split and if Albert would return. Mo says Albert is under contract and he expects him to be back and that tension between the two was the, quote, sole reason for the dismissal. Soul reason. But it sounds like, like it was, that was a reason. Uh, That's just based on the tweet I'm reading here from uh, Jeff Democrat. Yeah, you would definitely read into, okay, so you're saying there's a chance. Or that. So, many, uh, so many things to to try and figure out here. I, I see a lot of people mentioning La Russa. Say it because it's such <laughs> it's like so a storybook. Right book, yeah. But think about it. Think about it. If he wants to be funny, it would be hilarious. Can, can we just write the crazy chapter of the final chapter? Wouldn't it be awesome? Oh, Albert's back. Tony's back. That's what I'm back, saying. Yachty's back. Wayno's back. It's funny because... <laughs> You noticed right when I started smirking because that's just, it's one of those things you can't not think about, even if it's crazy. I don't even think it's that crazy, by the way, but it's something you have to think about. Hey, right now, all options are on the table, crazy or not. I mean, all options are out there because this just kind of blindsided everybody in the face. Well, what, what, what are you thinking? Now, the reality is if, if they weren't happy with Mike Schilt, Tony was the guy who would push and think outside the box. That would not fly with the current regime right now. They would not want to go down that road and bring that back into the. I, I don't think they would. That that would just be you know you and I just talking here, but I don't think the Cardinals. Even if if Tony was interested and wanted to come back, they'd be like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> we got a certain way of doing things. We just got rid of one guy. I don't want to bring him in because he's not going to be happy with the way we're doing whatever we're doing right now. Man, fascinating. And, uh, again, breaking news about uh, 136 our time, Jeff Passan of ESPN reporting that uh, Mike Schilt is out, has been dismissed as manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a Zoom, I believe it's still going on, with John Mozeliak and Bill DeWitt right now. 
So we're on the air live, clearly, and we're trying to read the uh, the tweets from reporters that are on that Zoom. Jimmy Hewer. <laughs> yes. Crazy news, man. It is nuts. Uh, we're going to find out here in the coming hours a little bit more, I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to do some digging around and some investigating, but Mike is out. Mike Schilt as the manager of the Cardinals. And just, again, I like you reading some of these tweets. Again, Dennis Dodd, who is a big Cardinal follower apparently he's involved with the zoom too he says uh apparently current cardinal coaches are under consideration for schilt's job so there you're thinking obviously ali marmol yeah stubby clap to be the manager yes um yeah i mean look when when they dismiss mike Matheny, now it is different in season because it's hard to make a wholesale change in season but the Cardinals have been really good over the years, and it's one of their business models. It's a reason people want to be in the organization. It's because they promote from within. And if you're a manager or a coach, and you're in rookie ball single A, and you know of a chance, if, if you perform well, if your teams do well, to move up and eventually get to the big leagues, that's the other side of it. If you don't care as much about a proven manager, if you want to go with, hey, the brain trust nowadays is an analytics department, where the manager is is melded with the front office, and it can be somebody that's not a huge name, like a stubby clap, like an Ali Marmol, and some of those decisions are being made more so as, as a, uh, a conversation with the front office. A guy like Marmol, a guy like stubby clap, I think those two are absolutely in consideration. Yeah, because I think that is a conversation that we have about the game right now anyway. A lot of teams, not everyone, but a lot of teams, like we use Tampa as an example. They have a certain way of doing it. And Kevin Cash is their manager. Uh, he is all on board with the way they do things there. And to the way he manages is this is the situation. Here's the result and the move. This is the situation. This is what I do. And this is the result. And that's how we move forward. I mean, it, it backfired on him in the World Series Game 6 last year with Snell, but with that exception, everything he's done is done that way. You know, we saw it throughout the playoffs this year or even the way they managed their ball club in this season. So is that the way the Cardinals are going to go? Saying these are these are the numbers, these are the situations, here's the results, and here's what you do in each given situation. Because there are not a lot of guys... Charlie, right now, there aren't a lot of Dusty Bakers and LaRusses. Those guys are older, but there's not those type of managers around anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do it this way, and that's just the way we're going to do it. No, we do it this way as an organization. If you don't, we're going to move, and we're going to go get somebody else who does. As we're trying to process this on air and, and think both short-term and long-term about the season, when you think about the influence that a manager really has on a team, Nowadays, and a guy like Mike Schilt, where, let's be real, he didn't have the same type of personnel, uh, I don't want to say decision-making, but but we know back in the day, if Tony wanted a guy, Tony had had the name and the pedigree to go in and say, hey, give me a guy. Mm -hmm. And Mike Schilt did basically ask for help in a very nice way a couple times this year yeah, he did. in the postgame, saying, I need help in the bullpen. I'm just thinking, with this Cardinals team, I don't think you could really criticize Mike Schilt that much for what he did with the position players because it wasn't like they had many tough decisions. We talked about this yesterday, the fact that there was nobody on the Cardinals bench that was really pushing for playing time. Now, there were injuries. Okay, so you had to manage early. Tyler O'Neill was out, Harrison Bader, but you, you kind of plug and play. And look, Paul DeYoung wasn't playing. You insert Edmundo Sosa. And I bring this up because... To me, the modern manager, their real imprint is how you manage the bullpen. And so maybe I'm reading too much into that, but just trying to think about why you'd make that change. The manager nowadays, how they really influence a game is how they manage a bullpen. And there, there were several times this year with some of the collapses, with, with some of those really bad endings of Gio Gallegos and Alex Reyes and mm -hmm. Daniel Vogelbach and some of those you know, 5-1 games they had a lead in the eighth and ninth six one and some of those losses and and some of those bullpen moves you could absolutely question even though look let's be fair for a while there they had they had no good options besides three guys they had right. Cabrera Reyes 
and Gio Gallegos. They rode those guys. The front office got them some help. Let's all agree, I think. TJ McFarlane and Luis Garcia were much better than we thought. I, I just wonder if, if the main reason for this is managing a bullpen in some of these big spots, like the Alex Reyes move that a lot of people didn't like in the National League wildcard game. Because nowadays, a manager does not have that much influence beyond that. So, yeah, there's truth, much truth in that. Unless it's a big platoon team. Okay, if you're the Giants or the Rays, right. and you really have to manage your platoon lineup, righty-lefty, I understand that. But the 2021 Cardinals were plug-and-play position player-wise. When healthy, yes. Agreed. Yeah, it was just you roll that group out there and you let them do their thing. The bench wasn't great to begin with. That was part of the problem from exactly. management up top. Uh, and to your point on the bullpen, uh, I don't know anybody was going to make them winners in the month of June when they got no help. Uh, and, I, and again, I'm not sitting here defending Mike Schilt because we were frustrated. I go, it's kind of his job. He's got to find a way. It was just what he had. Every time he plugged something in, it, it didn't work. Then they finally got him some help. It worked to an extent, and then they caught, you know, like a house of fire there towards the end. I'm just, I'll tell you what, Charlie, I'm really, I, I'm i kind of blown away because of this reason. I don't think I've ever seen a team that won 90 games, had a clubhouse that apparently got along. Mm -hmm. it's, they weren't infighting. You know, it wasn't all over, hey, these guys don't like each other. And... I don't think I've ever seen where a manager got fired. Plus, he he's won. He's been in the playoffs three consecutive years. I'm not saying he's the greatest manager, but I'm just putting all that in my head. Going, I don't think I've ever seen a guy get fired for that reason. I agree with you, and that's where. Look, I never root for anyone to be fired, but if you're a fan of the St. Louis Cardinals and want them to be excellent, you can look back at the last two managers because they both had tremendous regular season win-loss totals, right? And Mike Matheny took them deep in the playoffs. But guess what? Even though hey, people liked Mike Matheny, people like Mike Schilt, and they each had, what, four years or Schilt three, four years to try to win a World Series. The St. Louis Cardinals are in the business of winning World Series. Tony La Russa won World Series, all right? You had some really good teams the last five, six years. Now, not as good, but still, the Matheny teams, those were teams that could have won a World Series. With these current Cardinal teams, you can certainly say they could have achieved more than they did. And so if you're a fan of the St. Louis Cardinals, I think you at least look to Bill DeWitt and John Mozeliak or whoever was the one that really made this choice, and they're saying, you know what? The last five, six years aren't good enough for them. I think you have to like that. Because these haven't been bad managers. They've been good regular season managers, and they usually go to the playoffs. Now, yeah. have they run deep in the last, what, five years? No. But if you're a fan of the Cardinals, I think you like the fact that the St. Louis Cardinals want more. They want to be back in the NLCS. They want to be back in the World Series. They want to hang that 12th banner. I hope you're right, but if they bring back a guy with little to no experience as a major league manager, I start to go, well, this is just them wanting a guy who says yes. Now, I, I get your point. They've made changes because, it look, it was going south, like I said, when Matheny got let go. Uh, the Schilt thing, I'm still kind of, we'll find out here soon what really is going on here. Um, but if, if they go get, player or manager X who has never managed in the majors, but is part of the organization that tells me you just want a yes guy for what you're doing, no matter what, because here's the rules that you get to manage by. Just go do it. I'll, I'll send you the roster. Don't worry about it. This is what you do. Uh, if they go outside the organization and they bring in whoever that guy is and he brings his own ideas in, then you go, okay, then there's something that they realize they were missing within the managerial position that they didn't like, and they had to go find it somewhere else. And and if they truly want a yes man, and I say this with no disrespect, mm -hmm. I don't feel like Mike Schilt really rattled the cage, though. Again, he, he no. very nicely, Now I don't want to call him a yes man because I, I think that's disrespectful, but I do think that he towed the company line. And even when he asked for help, he didn't do it in a real disrespectful way like, uh, I don't know. I don't got anybody. Look, look at my names out there. Look, mm -hmm. look, look the team that they're uh, giving me. 
right? I mean, he very nicely in some of these post games basically said, we're doing the best we can with what we have, which I would want any manager to do that. It's a mess right now, isn't it? It's just, it's, <laughs> I, I, it's it really, crazy. Yeah. You know, I said at first, I said it's surprising, not shocking, but now I feel like it is shocking. And, and, and it's more so because of earlier this week, the reports of a contract extension. Yeah. I mean, there were, I mean, when Derek says something like that in his post dispatch article, you know, he's, that's, that's a real fact mm-hmm. that they, you know, we're going to sit down, we're going to iron something out. We like the way things went. Everybody's in a good mood. Something happened in that meeting that went severely wrong. And I can't imagine what it is. It doesn't appear that John Mosaic wants to talk about it publicly, but something really had to go wrong for this organization to do a complete 360 and go, you know what? He's got to go and we're going in a different direction. And if you read into the tweet that we read on air earlier from Jeff Jones, who said that Ben Fredrickson asked the question about the tension between Mike Schilt and Jeff Albert, and John Mosaloc said that wasn't the sole reason. And look, I'm going to go back and watch this entire Zoom. We're obviously on the air right now. Yeah. But it, it sounded like from reading that tweet that it was a reason. It definitely had to be And part so of the reason. is that organizationally? That the Cardinals are still aligned with Jeff Albert. I mean, you could you could well, read into that and 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 make that conclusion. I'll throw this out there: the team took off in that the last three weeks of the season. I'm still not sure why. Paul Goldschmidt. <laughs> well, yeah, I I know those Harrison guys. Bader. I know those guys were hitting, but why were they hitting? Is what I you know what changed? Because you know Goldie was big, pretty good all year. But O'Neal just blew up, right? I mean, he was good, but he was outstanding. The rest of the lineup became longer and deeper, and everybody was hitting. Was that was there something going on ph- philosophically with the hitting in the last three weeks of the season that changed and everybody got on board with? And then they had their meeting, and Mike said, yeah, that may have been part of it, but I think it, no, you're done. Yeah, I don't know. We're speculating, but... I still think there's something that, as great as it was the last three weeks, there's something we don't know that led to just everything taking off. And I don't know. We'll find out in the coming days. And that's where we talked about this several months ago when the topic of Jeff Albert was a big talking point. And and John Mosellock was asked that by Brooke Grimsley about Jeff Albert being on the hot seat. Mike Schilt was asked that as well. And they basically said, we're not going to make this guy a scapegoat. And if you remember around that time, it was Paul DeYoung, right, who said that he had been talking with Ryan Ludwig yeah, about hitting. And I just bring this up because I was at the ballpark a couple days later. Ryan Ludwig was in uniform. So I don't know what that means, and I don't know what that means for the future. It may mean nothing, but it was kind of odd to see that after Paul DeYoung had brought that up. So I don't know what turned the tides for the Cardinals' offense in the, the second half of the season. Now, clearly, whether it was Mike Schilt that made the move, when you split up, Goldie and Arenado, and also Tyler O'Neill went off. But splitting those two up in the order, now was that just a coincidence? I don't know, but I'll give whoever made that decision credit because that offense took over when it became you know Tommy Edmonds setting the table and Goldie and Tyler O'Neill and then Nolan Arenado batting cleanup, and you had a legit two, three, four guys that were all hitting thirty homers. It's it's nuts here. The release just sent to my email. Uh, further statement here from Jose, like other than the one we already have given, with just one year remaining on Mike's contract. This is a quote from John Jose, like, it was in everyone's best interest that we address this now. That tells you there was something going on. They were not happy with one another, and Mike wasn't on the same page that he was. So we'll see where it takes us, I guess. You wonder then, so... Could they not hammer out a contract extension for whatever reason if it was philosophical differences? And then if they can't come to terms, do you all of a sudden just say, okay, it's it's best to end it now? But this also strikes me as something big happened. Yes. Something there was a there was a big disagreement. That's the best way I can put it. We're gonna find out. His manage his record, by the way, is two fifty two and one ninety nine. That's what I'm saying. It's it's, it's a great. Like he was awful. It's a great regular season record. Same with Matheny, mm-hmm. and he did get to the postseason. Mike Schilt the last three years, as Mike Matheny got to the postseason a lot of those years and ran deep, NLCS, World Series, NLCS 
for the Cardinals here. You got to the NLCS in 2019, but you got swept by the Washington Nationals. So, look, you got to the Final Four, and you give them credit, but you also knew they were a mile away from the World Series. When I say they were miles away, I mean, you got swept by the Washington Nationals. You you weren't really that close to winning the World Series that year. And your other couple of years, you have first-round exits against the Padres last year in the weird COVID year and the National League wildcard game this year. So the Cardinals, they, they want more than a good regular season and a first-round playoff exit, which, again, if you're a Cardinals fan, I think you can appreciate that. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff.